Hello, everybody. Welcome back to D&D &D 404. I am your DM, Tony. And joined with me today are the other three WWE wrestlers in my lineup. Fellas, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, starting with the brawling, muscular, veiny Jerry. <laughs> That's one of the best intros ever. <laughs> that was that was wonderful. Uh, Armos checking in. I got to say, used to watch wrestling as a kid all the way growing up and some of my favorite ones are from uh the those almost what 80s to 90s so good old macho man randy savage oh yeah he's the cream of the crop rising to the top you are nothing but a green sand in the desert that is macho madness i've never simultaneously yes. oh, hated God, and loved him. something so much <laughs> he is wonderful I watch his interviews all the time, and man, it's it's great. Yeah, and when you people do his his uh, impersonations, uh, I love it. It's I feel great. like we should let Alec go next because he always gets his thing stolen. <laughs> uh, you guys definitely will not take this one, <laughs> but um, my name is Alec. I play Drell of the Ashbourne, and my favorite WD, WWE superstar is. We could do I would have to say the rated R superstar Edge. Um, <laughs> he's the fucking man, dude. And for those who don't know, he had like a neck injury in like his prime and he had to end up like walking away from it. The 2020 Royal Rumble when he comes back in the entrance of it, as soon as you hear it and everyone goes nuts, it's one of the greatest comebacks like mm. ever. I fucking love Edge. So, yeah. Eddie Guerrero close runner-up r.i.p all right and i am dan i play menace pebble walker your tiny little swarm keeper ranger and uh i i'm guessing i watched the least wwe here uh of the group but i did used to watch at my buddy my buddy's house uh david back in the day in my preschool elementary school days and we always loved watching ray mysterio i'm gonna mm. have to go to the ray mysterio that's a goodie that's a good one he was a favorite when i was younger yeah. too. i think I think the yeah, best sure. mass wrestler out there. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. Loved watching him. And then how about we... Uh, about oh, Tony? no, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Mine is a three-in-one. Oh. Mankind. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mankind, Ma a.k.a. That Mr. Sacco, a.k.a. <laughs> Cactus Jack. Mm-hmm. Well, was... Actually, it's four, right? If you I actually then count just McFoley. Oh, yeah, yeah McFoley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And of course, <laughs> the boulder. Is that he voices the oh, boulder? Fire and and the of boulder, dude. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's such a great guy. <laughs> dude, mankind was uh, like probably he. Dude, he, I, he used to give me nightmares, dude, as a kid. <laughs> yeah, right. He was so fucking weird. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> yeah, dude. I feel like he went to the wrestling audition. He goes, oh, what do you got for us? I got a bunch of leather belts that I put on my face. Ah, oh, you don't like that? I got this uh, hippie shirt I could wear. Oh, you don't like that? I got this sock. Oh, I, I could just go as myself, a normal businessman who's tired of his day-to-day -day job. And they're like, yes. <laughs> <It's> just like, <laughs> I just love that his finishing move was putting the sock on his hand and then sh putting it in other people's mouths. Wonderful. <laughs> so I... So I have a suggestion, Alex, since you're doing the rundown today, do it in a Wait, Randy Savage voice. I Ooh. see everyone else does Randy Savage really great. So maybe when oh, they do yeah. the rundown, but <laughs> this time the warrior, we're like, <laughs> today's rundown. I'm going to go ahead and do it in my normal voice. <laughs> and this rundown is brought to you by the discord gonna go ahead and plug it again and it's actually super great uh milestone we hit a hundred members yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah that's pretty dope so again if you're yeah. listening to this and you're not in the discord you're super missing out it's got a lot of great content um a lot of people are sharing their own campaigns their own characters and um their own homebrew stuff so um, and it's also a great place where Tony sometimes also adds the uh, character stat blocks and some map photos. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if any of that sounds enticing, make sure you also, join. If you want to just like get in there and like chat with us, we're like always open. Just let us know. Add us. I'm probably in there too much. <laughs> but I love you guys. So. <laughs>
Awesome. And now it's time to roll for the recap. You know the I deal. I it needs to be a two. <laughs> it needs to be Dan. Yeah. I'm a three. I'm three. I'm three. He's three. He's oh, three. I'm He's three. Two. Two. It definitely does <laughs> not need to be two. Oh, you just manifested it. You know the deal. This is a newer segment we've been doing. We roll to see who does the recap, and we roll a giant uh foam rubber D4, where I am the number one, two is Alec, three is Dan and four is Jared. If it rolls another three, this is weighted. <laughs> I want a new and die. And for those keeping score, it's been three the last three Thrice. times. Right. Yeah, all three times. So this is four. So if he's gonna, let's see if he goes four for four. <sighs> a Wendy's four Stop for four. Stop fucking four and roll. Never been so is, Why am I so nervous three. right now? Three for threes. Three for three. More threes. Yeah. Oh, it fell off. It fell no, off. No, it doesn't count. You want to see it. No, 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 we no. have to see it. No. You, know, you know the rules. Whatever we have it to is, see I it. won't believe it. <laughs> it is. It would have been a three, of course. <laughs> we should have just went with it. We're going to go with the flick. Wait, get, whoa, whoa, whoa. You better flick that real hard. This is weighted. Like, this die is weighted. Are you kidding me? Tony, you just sucked it. Okay, wait, I got, I got. He is so notoriously bad at this. <laughs> No, we have to see it on camera. Uh, we still have okay, to be able to see it. See it. I just built a little barrier. Okay. He knocks the barrier over. It went behind the couch. Are you fucking <laughs> Bro, kidding you me? threw it over he the couch. Threw it over the couch. I just want to point out to those listening. It's a three. Also, like the show. It's a three again. And then it was another three. <laughs> <laughs> of, course, of course it was. Yeah. All right. One All more right. lob. Tony, take the barrier down. <laughs> And just do the tidiest flick. I don't, you know, it doesn't need to be whoa, a man. Because then it doesn't flick. spin it enough. It's got to get a lot yeah, of height in there. Some... Do... Okay. Uh, Take the barrier away. Uh, Take good. the barrier away. It's a one. Hey. Uh, I got to do it. Thank goodness. Do you smell the Thank recap? <laughs> The Bloodshore Bandits make it to Raven's Rest, yeah. Pretending to be Berkey's Fallen, yeah. Make it past the Red Guard checkpoint. From there, the gang splits up with the little birdie and the Tolkien Giant, and the three heroes head to a tavern named the Raven's Tears, yeah. Where Dwell overhears a couple of Red Dawn guards talking about them, yeah. Unjustifiably putting them in a position that they'd rather not be in, brother, yeah. <sighs> And then a Kenku child steals Arnold's coin pouch and the group chases them out of the town. Run, little birdie, run as the group chases down the tiny Kenku child. The blood shark vein can be seen being pulled into Raven's Rest, yeah. But the group gets the money back and meets back up with Bertie and head to the Shades Demands, a little shop that sells contraband within the walls, yeah. What kind of contraband, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. A piece of contraband that'll put a spark in the show, yeah. Really light up the session, yeah. As they find the magic lantern oil for the fell hog burn, yeah. But there was a catch. The three heroes need to use the oil to go back to the material plane in the very shop as there was a lack of trust between the two parties, yeah. And as the three heroes use the fell Auburn to finally return home, the Revenger smashes through the building with his iron gauntlet, snatching Drill and slamming it to the ground as the other two make a not-so-daring escape here, just proving that they are but mere shadows in the realm that is Revenger Madness. Bard, plan and troll, get on with the show! Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the world of Humbrea, featuring three first-time adventurers and one very patient DM. This is D&D &D 404. Boyos, we pick up today's session, session 58, with a split party mm. at the DM's doing. Mm. Thought it was suspicious we had three vials. Perfect amount to go there, back, and then back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start like this. Drell, get, roll me a d20, and yeah, menace again. Roll me a d20. Let me know who gets the high roll. That's who we'll start off with today. Is this a dexterity thing? <laughs> it's just a roll roll. Roll roll. Got a nine. 18. Drell, the last thing you remember was almost igniting the fell Ogburn. 
and the world around you was beginning to plane shift back to the material plane. And before you were snatched through the wall by this iron gauntlet, in a moment of respite turned into complete chaos. You are ripped out of the backside of this building, the general store that you bought this lantern oil from. Roof. Ripped out, you are being held by the Iron Knight surrounding you. You are held in the middle of the air before you can even react. All you see is looking down about 20 feet. This Iron Knight is holding you up and there are dozens of red dawn guards surrounding the building. You see Zenko, the shady Kenku that sold you the oil is pinned down to the floor. And before your vision goes black as you're slammed to the floor, you see a spear going to the back of the Kenku's head, effectively killing him on the spot. The Iron Knight takes you in a moment of surprise, slams you down onto the floor and begins to pound on you and rain punches. Your vision blackens. You awaken in a cell. You are cold and the sounds of water droppings is all around you, almost like a cave. Dark and dingy and wet with little to no light. Only the flames from outside of your cell barely illuminate your surroundings. Across from you, there are more cells. You definitely know that you are in a dungeon of some kind, but the other cells are so dark you can't see into them. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. <laughs> Drell, you awaken in this cell, and it is completely empty. You are bruised all over. The only thing you have on you is your cloak and some, like, your undergarments. What about my glasses? Your gear is completely stripped gone. You have your cape of bellowing, which was not bellowing at the time, which is why they left it on you, and your and like an undershirt. That is it. You are bruised all over. You are slashed. You see deep red marks around your wrists and feet and neck, where where it seemed like they uh, bonded you up and restrained you so so tight. You feel like you wouldn't be able to break out of it. Or they use really strong shackles and made it as tight as possible to keep you restrained. But now I'm not in them. And no, you're not in them anymore. Okay. You feel very weak. You have two points of exhaustion right now. You are unaware of how much time has passed. The cell is very small. You're actually having a very hard time like being comfortable. There's no way you can like position yourself where you can like fully stretch out your legs. There is no bench. There is no uh, chains on the walls to hold you. There's not even hay for you to lay on. And you're like scrunched up against the wall trying to get as comfortable as possible. Drell, what is going through your head at the moment? I think the main thing is he's definitely worried about the uh, soldier or the, what is it, the, the golem you're calling it? The Iron Knight, yeah. Yeah, the Iron Knight because he's already gone up against it once um, and he has none of his stuff. So I, you know, he Drell doesn't like to really admit when he's scared, but it's probably definitely running through his head, at least right now. <laughs> doesn't really see a way out. As you sit there in silence, you hear the rattles of chains in the distance. You hear some voices down this long hallway that you can't really make out mm -hmm. because it's so dark. You hear echoes of footsteps and you hear two voices talking to each other in elvish do you understand elvish i do not know cannot understand what they're saying they're not like yelling in any way they're talking to each other but it sounds like they're laughing with evil intent like as if they're making fun of somebody behind their back but saying it loud enough for you to hear it then you hear chains wriggle again and you hear whip sounds followed by a Shrieking caw. Sounds like somebody's getting whipped at the other end of the dungeon. We're going to pause there. Minus, mm -hmm. Armos. Uh. The two of you have this water beating down on you in this porcelain closet as you look down and there is a naked Kemi Joe. And we return to you in that very moment where Kemi Joe looking up, not recognize you instantly and going, ah! 
Ah! Ah! Ah! Artemis! Help! Boom! In this sudden <laughs> chaos in the moment. <laughs> I was not ready for this. <laughs> As Kami Joe yells, the two of you <laughs> fall out through the shower yeah, curtain fuck. as a naked Kami Joe, who's conveniently covered in soap in all the right places, trying to hide his private bits. Artemis, help! Boom! The bathroom shower room door bursts open. A human standing around 5'10", 6 feet tall, clean shaven, bursts into the room. He looks like he's wearing guard armor, but with a Roman-esque style to it. His cape bellows as he stands, taking affirmative action in the situation. Lastly, he has a centurion helmet with a red mane, but along the bristles on the side of the helmet, it painted in yellow, says security. He draws the sword and he points it at you two. The sword has an engraving on it saying, fortune favors the bold in all caps. And he yells, loose the naked gnome or suffer at the hands of Artemis. Uh, my hands are just up. Uh, uh. Oh, uh, we don't want any trouble. Oh, uh, Kami, is that you? What? <laughs> <laughs> way? Oh, no way! Menace? Kami! Oh, I give him a giant hug. <laughs> he he hugs you back with one hand and his other hand is over his private. It's like, oh my god, it's been so long since I've seen you. What are you guys doing here? We know here? him. We know him. We know him. Don't hurt us. We know him. Who? <laughs> Who dare touches my naked companion? That's that's a weird way to say that. I was about to say, <laughs> not me. Not me. I'm just trying to get out of here. Just moving by. Uh, Reginald. <laughs> he's like, uh, I didn't know Minus had a, a friend like that. Almost. Mm -hmm. This is new to me. Reginald, you know Kemi. <laughs> I don't recall. Who's Kemi? Who's Kemi Joe again? Oh my god, we'll talk about this later. Do you see Drell? Is he here? No. Who's Drell? No, I don't see Drell. Where is Drell? <laughs> and you look around. And Kemi's like hugging. He's like, oh my uh, god, I barely recognized you for a second. Oh my god, it's been so can I put on pants, please? Yes. Oh my god, oh. please, yes. <laughs> okay, thanks. And he turns around and he goes back into the shower and he like rinses himself off real quick and he puts his clothes back on and while he's getting dressed artemis is looking at you and he looks like he has like his armor looks very roman-esque to the point where it looks like he's cosplaying a little bit because it's so out of pocket <laughs> but he, he has his uh his helmet says security on it and it also says security on the back of his bellowing cape and he goes how do you know my naked companion here uh, there's not a lot of time to explain. We met him back when he was doing some school project, okay? We helped him back in this cave. Oh, uh, cave, you say. Kemi, Joe, Joe. This is check out. And you see Kemi Joe come out. He's zipping up his pants. And he goes, yeah, yeah, no, Artemis, he's, he's cool, man. He's cool. I promise. I promise. They cool. They cool. Where's the, uh, what's your third? Was there a bigger guy with you? Uh, Drell? That was his name, yeah. right? Yeah. Where's, where's yeah. Drell? It's, uh, what? Yeah. I don't know. We saw something crazy happen when we were coming here. It's kind of a weird story. Uh, where are we? Well, one, actually, that's a really good segue. Why were you in the shower? And two, you're at, well, you're at the Sigic College. Oh, oh, my gosh. Well, you're in the Alchemy Dormitory at the Sigic College, to be precise. Listen, there's not a lot of time here. We, we got to get back. Almost, we got to get back, right? Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, hold what do you mean get, get back to where? What are you what are you guys talking about? If only there was enough time to explain every magic and all the <laughs> items in the world. We gotta go, Armas! I don't know what to do. <laughs> Artemis sheets his uh short sword and he walks over, he goes, Well, listen, we can all take a breather. But any friend of Kemi Joe is a friend of mine. And he like gives you puts his arm like over both your shoulders, he goes, Why do we drink this? conversation out of the shower room and let the other uh patrons go back to their nakedly duties and you hear other gnomes and halflings in the stalls oh, next to them be like yeah um hey listen we're trying to like uh wash our privates over here you think you can take it else you think they can take it back at your room is there is there somewhere private we can go out of how to eye prying eyes uh you hear a, another halfling well i thought this room was private but apparently not cammy oh my god Oh my god, we gotta hurry. I don't, we gotta hurry, okay? This is timely. 
Yeah. Goes, all, right, all right, come with me. All right, just you know, put your jackets on, put your put your coats on, and we'll 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 go to my, my we'll go to my dorm room. All right, it's just across the campus, right? Here. Across the campus. Well, yeah, the, the bathhouse is not connected to the dormitories. I mean, that's, that's unsanitary. Oh my gosh, we don't have time for this. You see Kemi Joe put on a heavy coat as he's walking out to the lobby of the bathhouse. And as the two of you follow him, you see that it's snowing heavily outside. It looks like the dead of winter. And he goes, yeah, it's just that building over there. You walk outside, it's nighttime. The snow is coming down. There's about a foot of snow on the floor. You would know that this snow is like signs of midwinter. Yeah. Are there people just walking around? You do see people walking around campus and at a quick glance, as you like walk out into the shoveled pathway, you see this magnificent campus before your eyes. The night sky is beautiful, filled with filled with stars. There are all these dormitory style houses. And look in the distance, you see like a marketplace and in the overlooking the entire campus is this beautiful shiny building with all these spires that stretch it to the sky the craftsmanship is like nothing you've seen before it looks close to elvish uh type construction it looks like a beacon of magic oh god i wish we were here under better circumstances come on let's go let's go let's go and as you travel down the shoveled path you see that there's shovels without anybody using them shoveling the path keeping the snow off the main roads oh armos you gotta learn how to do that <laughs> all right i'm trying to think this through i feel like we have to go back in that shower it is that not your impression yeah we're we're following behind whispering to each other as we're following the other two all right armos i mean we we can't go right back there because they might be watching that spot you know so i uh, i'm sure wherever we get to time goes by so different here so uh, Armos I don't know how it works we just got to get somewhere private and I think just use another one of those I don't want to use another one but we got to get drill when you look at the lantern it still has oil on it you notice that some of it mm. like a significant amount is gone but not oh. all well, we might have another use in this huh I don't know what we do here we need to go back for drill I mean I guess like what are we gonna get supplies <laughs> I just I don't even we just got to get away from all these people do it again, light it up, and get out of here so we don't take any of these bystanders. Oh, okay. That's what you're worried yeah. about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, we can just go now. Like, I don't care who sees us. <laughs> There's a lot to take some random bystander from the bath with us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Artemis is walking next to you guys, kind of keeping his distance, but he's walking very stoically with his chest out, and one of his hands is on the hilt of his sword, and his chin is up to the sky, but he looks like he's watching over... Kemi Joe, as the four of you now walk to a dormitory building, and on the outside there's a sign, Alchemist Dorms. It looks like a apartment building, but there's a lot of like vials hanging out from the windows. You see that all the windows for each of the dorms are decorated, very college-like. There's like hanging vials full of like party liquid. There's all the lanterns have like popping confetti in them. Um, you hear people laughing from the various rooms. It is a the chimney is shaped like a giant beaker. It looks like all these people had like a crazy time decorating this dorm for the semester. And the three and the four of you walk inside. And he goes, "Yeah, my my room is just up on the second floor. You can talk in there." And as the four of you walk to the building, we're gonna go back to drill. Yes. How you feel, man? You're all beat up. Yeah. Um. I don't think Drell's got his ass kicked like this in a very long time. And I don't think he's been this tired in a very long time either. I feel like Drell's like trying to get some type of sleep, but you're having some trouble breathing as is. As you're like inspecting your body, you see a massive black and blue wound like in your ribs. You're mm. convinced that you might have a broken rib or two. Ugh, fuck. <gasps> uh, kinda hurts to breathe. <laughs> and as you're sitting there, you feel a lot of time has passed as you're sitting in your cell. And then you hear the sound of closing doors. An iron gate, specifically, closes and you hear it lock. You hear footsteps coming down the hall. There are three men and they're wearing red guard uniforms. Full plate armor with a white tabard with the sigil of a sun placed on a shield. The symbol of the red guard. 
The three of them approach the gate, but two of them stick behind. The two behind look like guardsmen, with, and that you cannot see their face as they are wearing full plate helmets. Mm -hmm. But a heavier set man approaches you. He looks human, white military cut. Looks like he's in his 40s, standing at six foot three with a muscular power body build. He's wearing half plate armor. Wrapped around his shoulder is where his red guard sigil is. It looks like he's wearing a position of power. And he speaks. Well, look who we have here. Now, when I first met you, I didn't think I would ever see you behind these bars. How long has it been? A few months? Maybe a year, even. And he kneels down, and you recognize his face. It's Adelram Beckford. Oh. Uh, fucking hate this guy. <laughs> you saying anything to him? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I see you have caused a lot of trouble to have the Revenger sent after you. Impressive, truly. Truly impressive, but foolish. I told you. I told you. Revenger. <laughs> what? could have you done to have the Revenger sent after you? Getting into things we shouldn't have. What are you doing? Oh, God, I kind of just... I mean, he's beat the shit right now. I think Drill's just kind of listening to what he has to say. I don't really think Drill has the energy to even say anything to him right now. <laughs> Going to stay quiet. Bold and probably wise. He takes off his gauntlets and reveals his battered hands, scarred up from knuckle to wrist. Takes out a key and he opens the gate and he walks into your cell and looks down at you. Cracks his knuckles. Boom! Delivers a fist straight to your jaw. Picks you up by your cloak and brings you close to his face. Now, we can do this for as long as you want. Quite frankly, I enjoy doing this. I just want to know what have you been up to recently? Why are you here? Why would you come to Raven's Rest? I really like the jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Punches you across the jaw. Full send where his where his fist goes across your face into the stone wall, cracking it. I agree. The jerky ain't half bad when seasoned properly. But I thought maybe the three of you would have stepped down and Stop pursuing these foolish acts when I put that dagger through your cow's friend's belly. So let me ask you again. What are you doing here? I, uh, I, I just have a timeshare here that I've been trying to get my days blocked out. He picks you up and he throws you out of the cell as the two guards step aside as you are laying on the floor. Walks over to you, picks you up by the back of your head and slams it into the ground. You're going to take 17 points of damage as he begins to lay into you, slamming your head against the floor. He goes, I'm going to give you one more chance before I put you on the table. Why are you here? Yeah, I think, okay, so I think Drell is just not going to say anything to him. And I think, yeah, he's just, he's just not going to answer him. He stares at you in your beaten silence and he goes, fine. Have it your way. And he drags you down the hall against the bloody cobblestone floor as you get a better sense of where you are. You see that there are cells on both sides of the wall as you are being dragged. In the cell in front of you, you see a cloaked half. <gasps> He's wearing a green cloak and nothing but undergarments. He is hunched over, holding on to the bars as he's watching you getting beat by Adelrim. Very weakly. He looks very bloodied. And he looks like he's bleeding and he's holding a wound on his abdomen. You recognize him as Bandabaris as you are dragged through the halls. You go further and further down the dungeon walls and you see cells filled with Kenkus. You also see some cells filled with fallen people who look like they're starving to death. They look very ill. They haven't moved and they have very pale faces and they're just staring, staring off into the void. And you eventually brought to a table where they throw you on and they chain you by your arms and legs and they begin to stretch you like one of those stretching torture tables. After a few moments of him repeating the questions, you hear him say, he goes, it makes no sense to me, but 
your silence is formidable. Now why the council will not want to slay you immediately is beyond me. Especially after getting the revenger of all things sent on you. But no matter. Your execution by hanging is scheduled soon. It will be held shortly. And he gets real close to your face. And he goes, it should be fun too. Unlike executing the fallen, you won't instantly vanish when you die. Where the people could watch you suffer. Stands back up. He looks down at you. He goes, it sends him a better message anyway. And he walks away. And he talks to the guards. He goes, after you're done with him, throw him back in the cell. We'll be back soon. Some time passes and you go unconscious. We're going to go back to Medicine Armos. I don't need to know about every book here. I just want to get into the room. I'm sorry. We don't have time for this. Oh, but you got to see this. Oh, man. This is a wild one. You can look we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> you finally get to Kemi Joe's dorm room and Artemis is right there with you. And the three of you walk in and it is a very small room. It looks like it's meant to house a gnome and Minish, you fit in there fine, but almost you even have to like scrunch over a little bit. And Artemis crouches as well as the four of you get in this very low ceiling dorm room. There is a bed uh, along the wall right next to a window with a large desk filled with papers. And there's a lot of chairs set up. It looks like the way the chairs are set up, it looks like he has friends over pretty commonly. And then on this bed, you see along the wall, it's like a bunch of pictures. And Minis, he even has like the picture you drew him from when you guys first met, like hung up right there above yeah. his head post. And he sits down at the edge of the bed and he pulls like three rolly chairs up for you guys. Rolling chairs. Hey guys, all right, all right. Let's get to the Go bottom on. of this, all right? Like, take a seat, relax. Artemis, you can relax. And you see Artemis is sitting very stoically in a guard sitting position. And he just drops his shoulders a little bit. He goes, ah, much better. <laughs> Still looking very stoic. I love Artemis already. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, guys, what's going on? Why why were you in my shower? Armos, you got the lantern ready? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry to leave you so soon after seeing you after so long. Uh, there's so much I want to tell you, but uh, you're going to have to leave the room. Otherwise, you're coming with us to Shadowfell. I'm just going to lay it out there. Oh, I ain't Shadowfell. Why are we? Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you guys doing in Shadowfell? There's not enough time to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Drell is there. We... Followed somebody there. Uh, we need to go back for Drell. He's in trouble. Yeah, yeah, that sums it up really well. Thanks, Armos. <laughs> uh, he looks at Artemis and they like share like a look, and Artemis like shrugs his shoulders. I mean, did you get my letters, Kemi? Oh yeah, I got I got some of them. Uh, but the I mean, you stopped sending them like seven months ago. So, wait, what was the last thing I sent you? Was it when we uh? When we got to Lelouch's farm? Yeah, actually. And he goes over to a stack of papers and he pulls out your letter and... Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Seven months. Seven months. Oh, no. Oh, God. Ah! <laughs> now Minus is just panicking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm shaking, Sid. Reginald look, goes over to you, Armos. What's a month? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh... Uh, is that, is that a food? Yeah, yeah, you know what? You're you're gonna eat all the months and days. <sighs> Listen, we if you're not out of this room in the next 30 seconds, you're coming to Shadowfell with us. We gotta light this lantern now. Uh Alright, I, I I definitely don't wanna go over there. So Artemis, uh okay, let's go. Alright, hey, hey, ow, 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 ow. And he Artemis goes, No, I kinda wanna I kinda wanna see this. No, ow, 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 Artemis. Ow. I mean Artemis, if you wanna stay, that's cool, but <laughs> I mean, I'll go if Kemi Joe goes. I ain't going. I ain't going. I mean, if you think about it, we did save your life once. I think it's time to repay. He's probably learned a lot since we've seen him, huh? Seven months? The my favor. goodness. I have I have gone to my 400 level classes now. I am in my, my junior year. Yeah. All right. Kemi, is it Winter Shield? You on winter break? <laughs> uh, no, we're past that. It actually, Winter Shield was a couple weeks ago. I mean... Listen, if you want to help, Drell's in trouble, and he needs us. Uh, 15 seconds. <laughs> I, I'm not a fighter, man. You know this. I'm an alchemist. I can make potions and stuff. What do you think, Armos? He helped us pretty well last time. 
You're a support guy, Kemi. You're a support guy. <laughs> I don't know too much about Shadowfell, man. I got a friend who's a Shadowfell enthusiast. That's about it. Wait, what? <laughs> Do they know a lot about Shadowfell? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, there's not enough like time for that. <laughs> yeah, 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 where is this guy? Yeah, Minus just looks at Armos like, what are we doing? I was trying to convince him. I don't It's going to take a while to convince him. I yeah. just don't know what to do about it. I feel like we're wasting more time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it was seven months that we were gone in that period of time, you know what I mean? I feel like any yeah. more time that we waste is, uh, Drell's more and more in trouble. Yeah, I think we, we hit the, hit the lantern and get out of here. Yeah. We'll be back soon, I hope. Do you have anything for us that could help us in our in our trip? Yeah. Wait, I think I got something for you. Hold on. And he starts like rummaging through his stuff. Good call. Yes. Uh yeah, why don't you guys roll me a D20? That's a 12. So he's rummaging through his stuff and he like throwing out empty vials and he goes, uh, well, I got this thing I've been working on. And it's a tube that has like this green whitish liquid in it. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's supposed it's like a lucky potion I've been working on. Mm. If you want it. Yeah flicks you over the vial and the vial like jump uh flies over across the room and you catch the vial and it's uh he goes yeah it's called the uh it's called the filter of luck you drink it and you get lucky hmm. yeah does it last a while or is it like a one use kind of thing it should it lasts about an hour after you drink it oh, oh. all right when you drink it i'll tell you what it does all right all right we'll give the two of them a high five and then be like all right it's going down get out of here <laughs> <sighs> Nice to meet you, Artemis. I'll see you soon, buddy. Yeah, we'll be back. Come visit. It was a pleasure to meet you, new best friends. Oh, my God. Come around anytime. Yeah, come around. Just not in my shower. And the two leave the room. Armos. Armos, did you hear what he said? And then Armos lights the... <laughs> 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 did you hear what he said? <laughs> <laughs> best friend. <laughs> The lantern begins to glow as the green flame is illuminated within the fell auger and reality begins to shift as the fresh, vibrant wood around you becomes old and decrepit as it slowly turns back into Shadowfell. And we're going to cut there and go back to Drell. Oh. Drell, you are back at your cell, beaten and tortured. Oh. You're going to take an additional eight Jeez. points of damage after being at their getting tortured by the guards that were there and they threw you back in the cell okay up against the the corner of the tiny cell trying to regain your composure you still hear the guards laughing in elvish and then you hear footsteps of them fading away and then you hear the closing of an iron gate and then it's silent and then you hear a familiar voice from across your way from the cell where you saw bandabaris He's coughing. He goes, <coughs> Drell. Drell, is that you? Bando. Oh. Long time no see. <laughs> oh. It's really been a minute, huh? Not gonna <coughs> lie, I thought you fucking left us to die. <coughs> oh, yeah, fuck you too. <coughs> but I'm glad to I'm glad to see that wasn't the case. I wish you could be under better circumstances. Yeah. <coughs> they caught me during the heist. <coughs> When I went to Shadowfell, they were like waiting for us. I don't know how they got that information, but they got to jump on me. Why are you here? Well, we were, uh, Minas Armos and I were fighting some guy by the name of Julius Kendrick. And he decided to try to run away from us and he dragged us into Shadowfell. <laughs> a bunch of cowards. Stole yeah, him. he's a little bitch. So this is why we didn't want you guys to come with us initially, because <coughs> because the shout the fell is flooded with these guys. It's like a breeding ground for these for these cultist members. So that's why I, I ran the shards, or planned on ran, running the shards, but they caught me before we could do it. And I guess they were waiting for us to actually get them. But I gave, gave them a fight before <coughs> ending up here. How, so how long have you been here? I don't even know. Time is so different here. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I was, yeah. Cause like, I guess on the material plane, he's been gone for a really long time. Right. So, uh, I guess yes, it's arc two. <laughs> so so from, how long, like how long has that been like on the material plane? Um, from Dilmore to 
the end of Lelouch, about three months because Arc 2 started summer, and Arc 3, the end of Arc 3 was like at the tail end of summer. Before we got dragged into Shadowfell, it was about three months since the heist. I think that's the best outcome. <laughs> that's not too bad. <clears throat> he coughs more and you see some blood splatter outside of the cell. He goes, I'm gonna I'm gonna level with you, Drill. I ain't got much time here. I've been kinda holding on trying to find a way out, but it's no good. And he shows you a wound and he's a really nasty wound that hasn't healed. Um, and through the shadows, you see this open wound that's just calloused over, that's just slowly dripping blood. He goes, I'm going to tell you something. To give you a little hope. And he walks over to the other side of his cell. He removes a loose brick. And he shows you a vial of lantern oil. Hey. He goes, I, I was able to snatch one of these before they got me. I'm in hiding it here in case I was ever able to get a lantern. But they don't come down here at lanterns. And he slides the vial back and he moves the stone. And he goes, they're going to mess you down here. And they're going to try to get what they want. You know, I always, th I always knew you looked familiar, Drell. Mm. I think we've met once before, a long time ago. Before the heist? <laughs> yeah, way before the heist. Is your dad Brex? Oh, fuck, not again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad's Brex. Yeah, he was a good man. He was a good man. He was a good man. You knew my dad? Yeah, I knew of him. I even met you when you were so small. Oh, uh, you became a big fucker. Yeah, what can I say? Got it from my parents. I'm gonna go shut my eyes for a bit, but... Um... They're gonna try to mess you down here. Just keep that in mind. They gotta try to do everything they can to get information out of you. And he ain't letting you go. Can I... Now, you know, after I've been tortured and stuff, can I do a quick, like, inspection of my jail cell to see like the integrity of everything sure because if he removed a brick i just want to see like kind of like what mine looks like yeah go ahead and make me an investigation check fuck uh that's a 13 13 will find something as you weakly examine your cell you're like dragging your hand across the bricks trying to find anything your cell has no windows but you can guess by the dampness that you are probably underground mm -hmm. And as you run your fingers through the brine of the bricks, in the back of the cell, you feel a loose one. And you're able to, like, pull it out, but, like, you break the brick in the process. It, it's not like a secret compartment that Band of Bars has. And then you hear, like, a little... <laughs> the sound, can I get an idea of how big the thing is? Probably rodent size. It doesn't sound like a big beast or anything. It sounds like there was something in the walls. Mm, yeah okay so yeah i'll go ahead and i'll patch i'll patch it up for now but loosely just in case i want to come back to it it doesn't take a lot of effort okay you try to shove the broken brick back and the sound muffles and we're gonna okay. fade out from you and we're gonna go back to minus and armos the as the shadow realm begin shadow realm as shadow fell begins to form around you you appear back at Raven's Rest, but not in the location where you went before. You actually find yourself way further out from the building. As a matter of fact, across town, across the main road, you find yourself in an old, tattered windmill with a large hole that overlooks the entire town, roughly. The windmill is not spinning, but you see that below you are fallen workers towing the lands of this deathly rotten wheat farming what they can with red dawn members all stationed all around the farm you overlook into the city and you do see the destroyed building you see smoke rising up where Jarrell was snatched where you guys originally used the lantern and they are patrolling the streets you see the revenger walking down the streets surveying the town he does not look very far from your location he's near the inn which is a couple of city blocks away from the window. And we can see the guardhouse from here? So yeah, you see the giant back. Okay. It's like okay. very looming. It looks like a small castle can probably hold off a siege. What are the two of you doing? Falling onto the floor after being <laughs> transported. <laughs> <laughs> Your stomach, you getting used to the 
the the travel sickness now as this is your third time jumping um but you feel like your stomach is not doing so hot you also notice that instantly that your purified food that you have is now completely rotten mm -hmm. oh man i wish uh i wish kimmy joe gave us a locate person potion that would have been nice Blech. reginald's throwing up Blech. Blech. oh Ugh. gosh <laughs> this is terrible Good. Sid, how are you doing? <laughs> Pebbles falling out. <laughs> oh, God. All right. We're upstairs. How upstairs is it? Is it enough to look and try to see if there's any entrances into the castle from where we're at? Sure. Or... So you are on the third floor of this windmill. Like, you're at the very top. It's like a okay. at the top of this windmill is like a spiral staircase going down. Yeah. You can kind of see everything. At the top of this windmill, there's a giant destroyed hole. Um... Very weathered. Go ahead and make me an investigation or a perception check as you are now looking at the city with trying to get some detail. Tw <sighs> a dirty 20. I got a 17. With a 17 and dirty 20, you guys get the same information. This barracks, this castle structure is up on a hill separated from the rest of a town. The hill is about... Uh, extending the whole camp the whole barracks ground about 50 feet above the rest of the town with one singular staircase going up to the dark iron double doors which looks like to be the main entrance you don't see any other main gates you know that looking at the barracks there are four main towers on all of, one on each of the corners they look like giant guard towers on the eastern side of it the right side from where you're looking is an exit it looks like an exit way there is a forge at the base of the mountain on the side of the castle wall and it looks like it's exporting this hot material it looks like something is being produced inside the barracks and it's letting out this refuge this hot refuge you also see that like overlooking like you can't really see into the campus but you do see the double iron gates open as they are actively pushing the blood or vein through oh these gates well in that case i think we should go through the front we should follow <laughs> that thing <laughs> point to the the blood or oh we don't have much of a choice i mean oh we saw that thing and i'm eyeing this giant metal beast we saw him take drell and he's uh prowling around now so drell ain't there anymore he must be in the barracks right we're yeah. going where the uh we're going where the ore is i guess uh yeah i i think we could sneak through this fire thing over here but let's start there all right all right it you said it was this windmill surrounded by guards like are we there are to... yeah so when you look down you can see that there are two guards at the base of the windmill's entrance on the outside you also see about two to three guards surveying the fields as these kenkus and fallen are towing them it mm -hmm. looks like they're watching them work want to be a gas again almost <laughs> you know i do i actually do if we want to be the cloudy boys uh we well, I will not be a cloud. <laughs> Just you. Hey, why, why, why can't he be a cloud? Why, why do we have to be the cloud? We could summon darkness. Because we should I only do got the darkness one thing, more. Armos. Oh no! Let's do the darkness thing. <laughs> why try to hide if they just can't see? Cloud inconspicuous, big giant ball of magical darkness moving across the field. Why don't you be a cloud? <laughs> He's a child. Let's go with the cloud idea. Cloud it is. Poof. So wait, why isn't he a cloud? Don't think about it too much. And then he turned me into a cloud. <laughs> Good job, Sid. And I give Sid a high five. <laughs> and Reginald's making all these hand motions as he's trying to explain. <laughs> uh, all right, oh. over and out. And we try and we walk. I mean, he's just floating. <laughs> and we spend our time uh, sneaking down the windmill. So you travel down the windmill. I need both of you to make me stealth checks, almost with advantage. So how are you trying to get out of the windmill? Because there's one way in, and that's the main entrance, where there are oh, two it's... guards. Um, it'll be very easy. If there's, if I look out the window and there are vines, I'm climbing down that. Otherwise, nah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, it, if there are vines, I'll just climb down that. 
Otherwise, uh, through whatever the door is at the bottom. You definitely feel like you could climb down the side of it. It's broken side. There's enough, um, yeah. like wreckage there for you to hold on to. Absolutely. So yeah. you're going to make me a stealth check and a acrobatics check. Yeah. Better for stealth, but now I have to do other checks. It's the caveat. I mean, you could just float out the side too. You wouldn't need to go through the front door. Yep. You're in cool. gas form. I'm floating. <laughs> Arbos, you float down. Uh, what'd you get for your stealth check? 15. You float out from the hole in the top of the windmill and you slowly fall. And this is going to take you a moment because you can only fall at the rate of 10 feet. You're about yeah. 40 feet up. Oh, yeah. Man. Minus, you're going to make me a stealth check and an acrobatics check. Stealth check was a 30. Acrobatics check was a nat 20. Ooh, okay, all right. Showing off, right. you saunter down this, this side of this broken windmill with ease, undetected, and you run and you roll across the dirt path, and you find yourself back to the wall of this large building. Um, the windows are boarded up, but you hear like inhabitants inside of it. You hear people walking around, but you're not sure of the activities that they're doing. You do hear the sounds of metal clanking. Mm. Almost make me another stealth check as you reach the ground in your gaseous form. Uh, 21. Perfect. You meet up with Menace in your gaseous form across the street as you are sneaking along. We're going to cut from there. We're going to go back to Drell. Drell, you awaken from a slumber. You manage to get some sleep as you awaken in your cell. You're not sure how much time has passed but you do not feel exhausted anymore. You are just in pain. But there's something in the cell with you now. Towards the back of the cell, you see yourself that you're like against like the cage of the cell where like you would walk in. In the back, in the dark shadowy corner, there is a small wooden crate. The, the crate looks a bit damaged and worn, but it definitely wasn't there before. Oh God. I know Minus doesn't like opening random crates, but... <laughs> I think I'm going to have to try to open this. And uh, I guess I kind of crawl over to it and, and see if I can open it and look what's inside. You look at the crate and it's like nailed shut on all sides. It's not like a definite opening to it. How would you like to try to open it? Um, Just pry one of the top boards off, I guess. Or I'll look for a loose board that like anywhere along the top or sides and I'll just go from there. As you run your fingers along the top of the crate... And try to find you gently like you try to pull one of the boards off and it, oh, fuck it's, better. it's the top of its lid cut in half is teeth and a large tongue it is a mimic and it starts freaking out and two beady eyes pop out from the top of the box and it's like looking at you and it's like and it's like looking left and it's looking right and it begins to gnaw on the iron bars and it's like looking around and then it looks back at you I was fucking right. <laughs> um, you see, uh, you see, as it moves, it doesn't like grow any limbs. It's like moving like a box wood. It's just like, <clears throat> like by, by corner by corner, like nudging itself along, and it has these big, big eyes and this long tongue with tiny baby teeth. Did it look like it was working when it was gnawing on the the, the metal bars? Give me a perception. That's a check. nat fucking twenty. <laughs> You see the tiniest bit of steam rising from the iron bars. Nothing nothing changed about them, but you feel some heat from it. But it starts to get closer to you. I start <laughs> chewing on the bars to see if it'll do the same thing. <laughs> you start chewing on the bars as you jump past it. Go ahead and give me a performance check. Okay. It's like, come, come here, little mimic. <laughs> You on the bars just like me. <laughs> oh my god, I got a nap fucking one. <laughs> you go to reach for the mimic. He's like, oh, come on, little buddy. <laughs> and it tackles you and you slam up against the crate as it starts to lick you, not bite you. As it massive tongue just drags from your chest up your face like a massive dog. <laughs> And then it gives you these big puppy doe eyes. This is wild. You're gonna take seven points of acid damage as it's licking you, but you get the sense 
with it still on that 20 that it's not licking you in a harmful way it's trying to be friendly towards you but it just doesn't realize uh of the effect it's having on you and you feel like this small burning trail up from your face to your uh from your chest to your face like a dog trying to say hello to you walking through the door you notice that the brick that you took out before is completely smashed onto the floor can i look to see like where it came from like look pat like into the wall you go over to the wall and this thing's like following you around and it's trying to like gnaw at your ankle to try to get your attention and it you're looking at the loose brick hole and you feel like there's some space in there that like something really tiny can crawl through all right then i what i'll do is i'll just turn around and, and look at the mimic and i'll say hey little buddy and i'll try to avoid its tongue and like pat it on its head like the top of the crate you mean animal handling check please okay i think i'm actually kind of good at those an 11 it go you go to pat it gently on its head and it like snaps at you and you, <laughs> and you begin to pet it and it's letting you pat it on its head <laughs> and it begins to purr uh -huh. it seems friendly towards you can i see if i can start digging away at like where he came from like ripping the like trying to make the hole bigger the one he came from make me an investigation check to see like if you're able to do it i i, I literally have a fucking minus one to investigation and i rolled another <laughs> fucking that one so i got a zero <laughs> we're on <You> <laughs> D, D beyond and i just saw a zero <laughs> pop up you cannot figure out especially in this darkness how this thing actually got in here this place must have been built by the property brothers this this thing's immaculate you turn around and it's beginning to gnaw on nice okay, so that's what i wanted come on little come on little buddy <laughs> and it begins to eat and it's trying to eat at the iron and it looks like it's feeding off it and then it goes and it turns around and looks at you and it gives out another mimicky yawn it goes, and it walks over to you and then turns back into a full wooden box uh i assume can drill put the put it together since he was taking the acid damage that the acid would also be what's working on the metal yes i'm gonna be like hey uh you in there <laughs> and i'm just gonna like I'm going to tap him and try to see if I can gently wake him up again. You see one eye pop at the top of the crate and it look, looks up at you and it looks tired. And it's like trying to nuzzle up against you. <sighs> Fuck. I hate being such a good guy. The last thing I want to do is piss something else off as I'm hurting and I'm trapped in a cage with it. Um, all right. Well, then I guess I'm just going to let it sleep for at least a little bit and then see if it has like more energy later. Okay. So you let it sleep and we're going to fade back to Minus and Armos as you snuggle up with your new little pet mimic. I'm going to call you Boxy. Minus, Armos, as the two of you are floating through alleyways. Oh, this is weird. And I'm like crouch walking inside of Armos Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> when you cut back. <laughs> <laughs> Never speak of this again, Armos. <laughs> Both of you give me a stealth check as you are sneaking towards the side of the mountain where this barracks is sitting on, towards the forge. 22. 36. Hmm. Wow. The two of you have managed to slip past some guards carefully and taking your time moving in Armos' slow state on the bottom of this mountain. So like the barracks is sitting on top of like a hill and the hill is about 50, 60 feet up to keep the barracks above the rest of the town. But on this base level, there is a exit of a forge and there are all these crates and out from the forge, like a conveyor belt is all this hot runoff. It looks like it's not being used and it's being poured into um, barrels. And you see some workers, some fallen, like shovel them in trying to remove the refuge from the forge and on the other side you do see another exit where there are crates of cannonballs being packaged and boxed up you see cannibals coming out of that conveyor belt and you see fallen boxing those up on either side of those you do see red dawn guards watching over them 
<laughs> I'm still inside the cloud. I'm like, all right, Armos, you can hear me. Just, uh, you, you go the direction you want and I'll follow you. <laughs> if you want to keep going, go forward. <laughs> if you want to do something else, go, go another way. <laughs> what, what did the bridge look like the last time we saw it? The main gate? Yeah, the main gate. The blood ore vein was being transported through it. In this time but that you were sneaking, the gates have been closed and the ore has been transported inside. Dang. Okay. Well, we got no choice. So we head towards on. the forge. You want to go the, the lava way or do you want to go the cannonball way? Which way you want to go? Because I can go lava way. I'm pretty immune to, to fire for the most part. So <laughs> There's a way to go on there without touching the lava though, right? So it's like really hot rocks and like... Okay refuge so yes you could but it's a very about coming out so you will have to do a series of checks here to try to go through oh. but you may definitely we'll step on so, okay <laughs> that's the more fun way let's do the more fun way so, so i want to need you to make me an additional stealth check as you try to wait for the guards to look away and sneak past the fallen as they are walk okay. as they are working on these lines so stealth check first i got a 34. 13. That's with advantage. Wait. Oh, wait. Now I can use my feet. Oh, oh, that's true. I roll a d10. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, Dark One's Own Luck. Right. When you make an ability check or saving throw, you can use this feature and add 1d10 to your roll. Nice. 17. That's much better <laughs> than a 13. As yeah. hey. the two of you manage to sneak up to the fire hot conveyor belt at the Ooh. exit of, of what's supposed to be an exit of a forge and you look inside and it is about 10 feet of like like 10 cubic feet like you can get in there but you have to like crouch under um as all this hot refuge is coming out slowly being poured as the guards are not looking in your direction you make a distraction with the fallen and they lazily look away and you slip in through the fiery hot shaft damn the fiery hot shaft making it out of sight <laughs> yeah. when he minutes to make me an athletic acrobatic acrobatic check as you are trying to dodge this hot refuge on the conveyor belt need my inspiration day <laughs> got a two <laughs> from a two to an at 20 that's what wow, i like to see you guys are, <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh god you lose your footing for but a second but you manage to like hug the sides of the conveyor belt and like you're like scooting along with your hooves as like Armos is just blocking your vision as you two are occupying the same space. As the two of you are going through the forge, we're going to cut back over to Drell. Drell, some time has passed and you're hanging out with your little mimic pet and to the point where like you're talking to it. And it's just like looking at you. It's like fascinated by it. I know and Reg it's like Reginald thinks he's so cool and I don't know why. And it's just like <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Barbos has Reginald, and, you know, Menace has Sid, and my <laughs> horse left me. <laughs> it wasn't even my fault. <laughs> he makes <laughs> wooden box noises. <laughs> okay, so. i ready for that. <laughs> I need your help, Boxy. I need, I need your help getting through this door. Can you help me do that? <laughs> All right, I'm going to hold you, and then you just, you know lick away or chew away or do whatever you gotta do Bruh. and um i hold it up to like where the um port is for like the key and like the actual lock-in mechanism of the gate he begins to lick and chew away as he's feasting on the iron bars as they do begin to grow some time passes and band of bars has not approached the cell even with the noise and you talking to your new friend. You haven't seen or heard him in a while. Um, I guess I'll yell over to him and will not like whisper yell. And just say, uh, Bando, are you there? No answer. If you didn't know, this is Drell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh then I guess I I I'll just have to check on him, I guess, when I get when when we get the fuck out of here. And um I just keep helping Boxy uh, work on the door. Okay, so you hold up Boxy, and he begins to corrode away the iron mechanism as you see it start to melt in his mouth. 
and starts to come away as the acid drips down the bars and is now doing noticeable damage to it. Uh, so since it's like weakened, can I try to kick it open? Yes, this will make noise though. Okay. Well, okay. I guess I'll just maybe try to see. Uh, I'll probably just let Boxy keep going at it for a little bit longer until it's pretty weak and then maybe I won't have to kick it all. I can just, you know, give it a little bit of force and not make too much noise. As Boxy begins to gnaw on the iron gate, then mechanism begins to clink and begin to fold within itself as it's melting away. And you feel the, the iron gates jostling. Mm -hmm. And as the gates jostle, it's becoming quite louder as you're trying to like rattle it open as quietly as you can. And you hear footsteps coming down the dungeon halls. And as quick as you try to move Boxy away, two guards catch you in the act of trying to break free. They're like, and they speak Elvish to each other and they go, what do you think you're doing? Are you trying to leave? And they laugh at each other and they approach the gate. They kick open the gate, make me a strength saving throw as the gate is kicked onto you as they bum rush the gate as Boxy's eating it. Uh, that's a 14. The gate is knocked down onto you as you fall back into the back of the dungeon cell as you fail that strength check. And you see Boxy get knocked onto the floor, up onto its head, and it's like whimpering a little bit. It's like, ah, ah, no, and Boxy. it's trying to re like stand itself back up, but it's just a wooden box like shuffling in place. He goes, what the, when, do, when do we get mimics? Do we ever have mimics down here? Oh, I hate these things. Oh, you never you never had a little house mimic before? They're common around here. And he picks them. And he, picks it up with his spears. He stabs Boxy. No. And Boxy begins to like squirm. And he throws Boxy into the middle of the dungeon cell floor. And the other guard uh, turns to you and drags you by your cloak. Go ahead and make me a, a contested strength check as he is now forcing you out into the dungeon floor. It's a six. He drags you out into the floor. Yeah, that's right. Pick on a little box. You piece of shit. Oh, is this guy? He, the guard kneels down as the other one is stabbing it with a spear. He goes, oh, is this? Did you make a friend down here? Did you Did you really think you could make friends down here? Well, well your mom just left, so what? I had to make another one. Oh, my mom just left. Oh, well, did you did you did you penetrate her like this? And he stabs you in the <laughs> oh, chest. Fuck, that's so good. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. God, that's a good one. Fuck. I was supposed to make the penetration joke next. <laughs> you take nine points of damage as he stabs you in your in your abdomen with a short sword. You are now on the floor. You are now bleeding. As the other guard is stabbing this your pet mimic, as he's stabbing Boxy onto the floor, the guard that just stabbed you picks you up, and you see his face, and he is indeed a drow elf. And he pushes you all the way into the back of the dungeon hallway. Boom. You trip over iron chains. There are ball and chains on the floor. There are skulls on the floor as well. And there is a window right above you. And it looks at the outside. It looks like it's looking outside of the mountain that the barracks is sitting on. And you can see a little bit of moonlight in the sky. And then you look back at the guard. And this guard is continuing to stab boxes over and over again. And it is flailing in pain. And in a last stage effort, it looks at you, Drew, with its big, sad, doe, painful eyes. It tries to use its massive tongue to drag itself towards you, and it gets stabbed one last time as you see the light fade from its eyes and begins to melt away into this purple ooze jello. And you look up and you see this guard standing over you, and he stabs you again. He goes, We're not going to kill you just yet. But you will end up like your little friend there. And you look up through the little window and you see the moon shining. <laughs> and you begin to rage. Can you describe this burning hot rage for me real quick, Drew? Well, <laughs> he kind of touched on it already for me. But, um, <laughs> you know, Drell, first he had his horse. Uh. And his horse was, you know, all of a sudden took him from him. And, you know, finally he thought he had another friend that was going to help him in need. And these, you know, 
one thing Drell hates probably the most in the world is a bunch of bullies, and two of them just took one of the closest things he could think of as a friend besides Minus and Armos um, away from him, like right in front of him. So he's definitely pretty pissed. As you gaze upon the moon, losing yet another companion, this fiery hot rage boils within you as your amber eyes turn blood red and the pupils begin to change from human to something lizard-like as your nose becomes scaly with whiskers. We're going to cut back over to Minus and Armos real quick. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Armos, Minus, you two are in the middle of the hottest situation you've ever been. There is coal constantly going through between your legs, Minus, as you are on this conveyor belt. Go ahead and make me another acrobat acrobatics check. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. What was it? An acrobatic check? Yes. Uh, 21. You are dodging this hot refuge as you go along the conveyor belt, but you finally see the the light at the end of the tunnel. You see where this is coming out, and you, you see that there are these fallen guys shoveling this hot refuge onto the conveyor belt. Almost in your gaseous state, you are still concealing menace, but you know if you keep going this way, you're, the fallen are going to see you come out the other end of the shaft. What are the two of you doing? Moving on, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Where else to go? <laughs> I don't care about no falling. 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 We, uh, we follow that light. You travel down this conveyor belt as the, as the rocky cavern wall begins to become stone as you reach the other end of this forge structure and you burst out the other end as you just hop off this hot, um, molted rock and you see the fallen like stop in place and you see yourself you're in the courtyard of the barracks you're along like the eastern wall as you come out the other end of the tunnel and you see that there's all these barrels of like hot refuge that were dragged in from another location that these guys are just shoveling out like they're part of a routine and then you see guards from the center of the courtyard and there are a ton of training dummies there there's armor racks it looks like a big training ground the area you just came out to this area looks multi-purpose there are buildings within the courtyard and you see this massive tower all the way in the northwest corner where it looks like somebody who's running this would probably be in that large tower there and then the ground begins to rumble Boom! the ground erupts and the dust covers the air we're gonna go back to Drill. Yeah. <laughs> Drill, as the rage boils within you, you are staring at the moon and you transform again, but not into a tiny mouse. No, you turn into a massive beast standing at 50 feet tall. You burst what? through the dungeon ceiling in, and your head sticks out of the courtyard. Menace and Armos, you see this wide dragon head uh, with mouse-like features with uh, red burning eyes with short stubby arms as this large dragon rat-like body bursts <laughs> out of the ground with molten hot lava fire refused of electricity <laughs> begins to drip out of his mouth and he stands up as this giant rat dinosaur <laughs> like foot steps into the courtyard raging Two massive hind legs with very short, stubby hands. Standing at 50 feet tall and weighing two tons, standing before you is Drell of the Jazgenborn. As you hear slight notes, slight jazzy saxophone notes coming out of his brass nostrils. And that is where we're going to end this week's session. Probably very bassy <laughs> notes. I thought it was going to be rock and roll. It's, uh, it's a bass clarinet is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be epic. Uh, Drell, I gave you a character sheet, by the way. If you would like to go oh read God. that I, character sheet, I, talk I, about I'm it actually, in the after yeah, show. <laughs> I'm actually looking at it right now. It's oh, pretty spicy. Hell. I might save it for the next episode. It's it's pretty it's it's pretty spicy, but who knows? Maybe we'll talk about it. I can't believe you gave him a pet mimic and just killed it immediately. <laughs> in I know. Front of him. I know. Just when he thought he had his own pet too, just 
so fucked up. Uh, I'll tell you what I was uh, going to do in the after show. We'll, we could talk about that for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had a game plan, but things, things went uh, vertical. Pretty much <laughs> vertical. <laughs> That's oh, great. man. I had fun creating this character. I, I was on the fence about it. We'll talk about it in the in the after show. But um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Drell has another transformation, baby. <laughs> another transformation. Yeah, no power over any of them, but I mean, <laughs> it uh, it, it it just happens, which is <laughs> it, it works. Soon you'll figure it out. Now, as far as spicy episodes go, I think that's one of them, boys. I don't know how you guys are feeling. That was a good episode. I liked it. It got a lot done. It um, I liked the bounce back, the the like the multi storytelling. I think you did a really good job of that. Being able to handle two storylines at once. It's like oh, an onion. Thank it's you. Layers. <laughs> it's it's like a light switch. Well, mm. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, all I want to do is play this out now. I can't wait to play this out. I can't. I hate that we have to wait. <laughs> I know. Right? Uh, looks See, like you might it, be in a giant well, fight soon. <laughs> yeah. I have so much to say about this in the after show. I'm, I've been holding it in all episode. There's so many things I want to say, but... What do you guys think about the... I'll try to share the picture. It is AIR, and I hate to promote AIR, but, like, it's the only way I can get this onto paper. Good for us. Definitely good for us. I was about to say, I think for D&D-related stuff, I think AIR is perfect because you can get... You can create homebrew content and then still... You know what I mean? It's not like we're trying to sell it. We're just trying to give you good imagery. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, for us, the player is not being used as marketing stuff you know it's it's awesome pretty great just just gives you uh just gives you great reference to bring to the actual artist you know what i mean mm-hmm. <laughs> oh Good man stuff. is there anything you guys want to talk about before we end this before we uh close it out i mean there's a lot to talk about in the after show for sure but is there anything you want to bring up now um, um if you guys haven't been following up with Last of Us, it's pretty good. I know, I know we talked about I'm, it last I'm time. One episode, but... I'm one episode behind. I disagree. <sighs> I have hot oh, takes. Really? I have hot uh, takes okay. about it. Yeah. Hot takes. Ooh, Sh- okay. After changed. show drama. Yeah, possibly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Well, I am right. ready for the after show. See you guys there. See yeah, there. we'll see you there. Bye, everybody. Catch you next week. Later. Whoosh. All right, it's time for the Patreon shout-out, starting with the Blood Shard Bandits. Somewhere in the cold winter mountains of North Trillis, Ulrich Shield Dust continues to search for his golden blacksmith hammer. Deep within the mines, Ulrich tries his luck with the help of the finest dwarven blacksmiths. After a night of merrymaking with old friends, he awakens, hung over in an ice cave, upside down and hanging by his feet. The sound of a yeti is heard from within the cavern. Julius Kendrick is covered in shrouds of darkness, protected by the fell. He is on the move, plotting revenge against the Bloodshard bandits. No one knows if he is still in Raven's Rest or not, but he is certainly plotting in one of his many hideouts. Without his old crew lost to the blades of the Bloodshard bandits, he has no option but to raise an army of bones. Rains is making waves in the weather world as Meteor Mageologist. Ever since he saved all those people from certain death, his ratings have never been better. The downside is that his insurance has been raised due to negligence. May the rains bless down on Rains coin purse. Now it's time for the Sigic College alumni, starting with Artemis, who is alert and stoic as he protects the alchemists of the Sigic College and his new good friend, Kemi Joe, although the culprits of closet vandalizers are still at large. Robot Crisp, the artificer, is determined to make his next invention work. Right now, Robot is developing new tech that will allow for instant hot bread and calling it a crisper. <laughs> Hopefully this invention won't become toasted like the last one. The Barbarian Ralamus is making noise as the Rock Tour is firing up and his band is getting major traction. His band Beholder is gaining more fanlings every day. Benjamin Hayes is one of the newest Sigic College alumni and an astute wizard at that. Benjamin is currently majoring in street magic. Come to class to learn or get educated. 
Same Chaos is also a new member of the Sigic College alumni, however, a bit of a delinquent just as his name may suggest. Same Chaos is a part of the Tinkers Guild, which rivals the Alchemist Guild at the Sigic College. And we have Umbrea's Heroes. Alex Dredd is back with his newest animated scroll called Night of the Living Dread 3. We've been dreading this one. Man with Glass is currently appealing his recent court ruling as the jury couldn't come to a conclusion. Also, after new evidence brought forth by Man with Stone, the case has resulted in a mistrial. Sergio, the wandering vagabond, has begun travels to new, distant lands. His cloak bellows in the wind of adventure. But what is his quest? Lastly, we have another new member, Angel. This ranger specializes in adorable companions from lovable pit bulls to a horde of kittens. <laughs> That's right, kittens. <sighs> Cuteness can certainly kill with their tiny precious claws and nibbles and that's it for this week's shout outs if you'd like to be added to these shout outs why don't you go on over to our patreon that's patreon.com dnd 404 to see how that is done until next time everybody